Yeah, I want to stop a minute because, you know, Chuck, I really feel from the Holy Spirit, this book, Possessing Your Inheritance, is a book for this hour. Yeah, it, is. It, it, it is helping people even today. Yeah, and, and so, you know, some of you don't know Chuck's testimony, but some really horrible tragedies he went through. But from a wealthy background, but very horrible tragedies, a lot, a lot of loss. And, but the Lord has shown him, and now listen, because it's time to build the family altar. Mm -hmm. It's time to, to get in and, and restore your family's covenant. And you might say, well, we're just a mess. Well, God loves to work with messes, you know. I mean, He worked with all creatively, of us. He loves them creatively. <laughs> and so, you know, I and I want and I, so I want you. I feel from the Lord to ask people to go buy that book. Yeah. And possessing those two are yeah. key. Yeah. Well, possessing like, the gates of the enemy. Because yeah. we're, we're really had a both war. of those books. We're in a full circle season. We're in a full circle season, and so sometimes you go back and you revisit things from the past or information or a revelation from the past, just like the kings in the Old Testament would once in a while pull down the history books and they would go through them because they knew they were entering a season where they needed to study the history of the past to give them guidance for the future. And so, see, you've got a portion. Cindy's, Cindy's book is classic. It changed the course of the prayer movement because we didn't understand warfare. We didn't understand possessing. There it is right there. And here's this one, possessing your inheritance. Show them together. You go to war at your gate to possess your inheritance. <laughs> and this year is about surrounding your inheritance. Yeah. I, I wish I had time to really work that out for us because it's a little different and we've learned so much over the last 30 years of of not just possessing and uh the gate of the enemy but but actually possessing our inheritance but warring for our inheritance and now we must surround our inheritance and what does that mean to surround your inheritance? To surround means you have to know that your boundaries. See, God works in boundaries. Mm. And a lot of us get way outside of our boundaries and we wonder why we're not seeing the Lord do what mm -hmm. we want him to do. Well, you've got to know your boundaries first. See, that's part. I have predetermined your time and boundaries. Mm -hmm. Your boundaries are have a, a physical sphere but it also has a uh, spiritual sphere about it where mm -hmm. you are being positioned and faith works in time and place. You're being posi positioned to say, now, wait a minute. I see what God wants me to accomplish. I see the furthest horizon line that the Lord has for me. Now I some way have to make sure those boundaries are secured as I move into this next season. I've got mm -hmm. to break the old cycles. Remember, that's the whole issue of covenant. When I, in Genesis 15, when the Lord promises Abraham what he's going to give him, he outlines his boundaries. Mm -hmm. and, he, mm -hmm. and then he says, now here's all the enemies in your boundaries. Here's the Girgashites and the uh, Ammonites and the Jebusites, they're all in your boundaries. So actually, they all belong to you. Wow. You and know, you're Chuck, gonna, you're, you're going to be able to take those enemies that are in your boundaries and transfer their wealth over to what, what I'm calling you to accomplish. Wow. You know, as you're sharing this, I'm feeling something in the Holy Spirit. And I was just thinking, how do I verbalize this? I feel a refreshing wind of God blowing on this. Now, listen to everybody. You have come through such trauma. You have been in a season of such anguish 
but the Lord is saying that I am taking you to a place oh. where you're going to know where to align. You're going to know who your friends are. You're going to know who the enemies are. You're going to know <clears throat> how to deal with the enemies. And the Lord says, I am surrounding you first with the revelation that you need. And there is going to be a refreshing wind of God. You see, because if you don't know how to be surrounded, you don't understand your boundaries. Oh. You feel anxious. You feel out of sorts. Mm -hmm. Everything is out of kilter. But the Lord says, I am going to reveal to you how to be surrounded and what your boundaries are. And from that, you're going to find a peace, a rest, and a refreshing. Listen. That's for the mother at home. That's for even your intercession has a boundary on it. Mm -hmm. And now hear this. The spirit of God just hit me when she was prophesying that. This is so important for us as we enter this year. And let me, let me say one more thing. See, we're made to encase and be, for the Lord to live in us. We surround him in us. And here's the, the our spirit man he lives in us the glory is in us and another thing god's saying is i want that glory that is in you to spread out and fill your entire boundaries mm -hmm. and that's what the real issue is i want you to break anything in your soul that's keeping my glory surrounded because i want the glory to come out of you surround your boundaries and be seen all around you mm -hmm. and so i feel like we are in one of our biggest years of breakthrough deliverance that we've ever had whoa wow wow you know, wow i wonder if cindy i can just, feel is, that is this just a picture because when we when we bought the house we're in now chuck um it had it has uh some pipe fencing around it it's got some amount of property not a large amount but a certain amount and uh there were several places in the fencing where damage had occurred in the past but we had never repaired it and then some lady came to the corner of the property and ran her car right up <laughs> onto the pipe fence and wrecked it you know and in fact got her car trapped on it they had to get her car off this is a picture picture yeah, and what we had not until this last week and it's been a while and Cindy has really been sensitized to this, shall we say, uh, begun to do the repairs <laughs> and God has shown me a way to re-engineer it. But until we have our boundaries established, then, uh, then you're basically at risk from being able to do what you say, which is to encapsulate. Well, that's the whole issue of war. I love, here's what makes Cindy's book so incredible for all of us. Here is Abraham who has this incredible promise. Isaac is the, uh, embodies the promise and it's his only son. And so he's already had to give up Ishmael. He's given, he's gone through all these testings in his life. And then the Lord says, I want you to come up to Mount Moriah and I want you to give Isaac. So I want you to lay your promise on the altar. See, you're, you're beginning to connect all this together, what God's doing. Lay your promise on the altar. He, he said, now order the wood, right? So Abraham knew how to worship by this time. And so it says, Abraham set the wood in order. He then laid Isaac on. Now, I want you to remember Isaac was 36 years old. We're not talking about some kid here. We're talking about a generation who had to submit to this process. Wow. And so he lays him on the altar and Isaac finally says, uh, where's this, the sacrifice? And all of a sudden, because of Abraham's faith, God comes down, reveals himself as a gyra who causes us to see our provision. Now, you're not going to be able to get out of this era without understanding provision and multiplication and harvest. And Jaira, I will cause you to see your provision. And with that, all of a sudden, here's the ram. Well, this is the beauty of it. This is what God did. He comes down, reiterates, the promise he gave to Abraham, 
Then right there in uh, Genesis 22, he extends the promise over to Isaac and adds to what he has given Abraham. That's also part of what we're going to experience this year. We're going to start seeing the generation come behind us, mesh their promises with us. Mm. And as we build a house, we're going to have the promises God said to us back to the parent root. Take, for instance, that generals back to the parent root is going to go back to that first book. We're going to watch God then mesh in the promises that will build it for the future. That is a great way of looking at this mm -hmm. as we advance into the season ahead. 